Welcome to this podcast on PROC FCMP, presented by Amadeus Software. My name is Bob Newman, and I work for Amadeus, who are experts in SaaS and providers of consultancy, support and training for SaaS software. Please visit our website, www.amadeus.co.uk, to find out more information on this podcast series, as well as other services we provide. In this presentation, we'll be looking at the FCMP procedure, which was introduced into Base SAS with version 9.2. In my opinion, it's the best new feature in SAS 9.2. What it does is to enable you, as a SAS programmer, to define your own functions and subroutines. You do so using, for the most part, ordinary SAS code, together with a few statements unique to PROC FCMP. Your function definitions can use some ancillary functions provided by PROC FCMP for such purposes as handling arrays, calling macros, and solving equations. Future podcasts in this series will be covering these in more detail. Functions and subroutines you define are stored in function libraries. Physically, a function library is just a SAS dataset. A function library contains many functions and subroutines. Within the library, they are grouped into packages. A package is a group of related functions. When you write a program that uses your new functions, you need to tell SAS what function library to use. You can only use one function library at a time. You do this using the system option cmplib. You can then use the functions in SAS data steps, in PROC SQL and certain other procedures, in compute blocks within PROC report, and in risk dimensions procedures. You can also use them from the SAS macro language via percent sysfunc or percent syscall as appropriate. But you can't use them in procedures other than the ones listed here. Before we look at some examples, let's take a moment to consider the differences between a function and a subroutine, or call routine, as the SAS documentation has always called them. The main difference is that a function only returns a single value, whereas a subroutine can return several values. But another important difference is that parameters to a function are passed by value, whereas parameters to a subroutine are passed by reference. The difference in efficiency can be considerable if parameters are substantial. For example, a single parameter could be an array of a hundred long text strings. If this were a parameter to a function, the whole of every string would have to be copied when the function was called. On the other hand, if it were a parameter to a subroutine, only the address of the array would need to be passed to the subroutine. For this reason, it is generally good practice to define subroutines rather than functions whenever the parameters include character strings or arrays, even if only a single value is to be returned from the subroutine call. Actually, to be precise, it's only the parameters returned by a subroutine that are passed by reference. There is nothing to stop you declaring all the parameters as returned parameters whether your subroutine is going to alter them or not. Our first example is a function that checks whether a number is prime or not. Let's look at the code. We invoke PROC FCMP with the outlib option, which specifies the function library where our new definitions are to be written. Here we are using a temporary library called work.funks and a package within that called primes. We begin the function definition using a function statement, which is unique to PROC FCMP. We are calling our function is prime, and the parameters it takes are listed in brackets. This function has a single parameter called n. It returns its result using a return statement. Here, the value of p will be 1 if n was a prime number, and 0 if it was not. An n sub statement also unique to PROC FCMP, terminates the function definition. The rest of the function definition is standard SAS code, 
which we need not look at in detail. There is a little precautionary code at the beginning where we make sure we are dealing with a sensible integer value of n and a loop in which we check exhaustively for possible factors. Before the function can be called, we have to use the cmplib option to specify the location of the function library. Having done that, the function can be used in the SAS data step just like any other SAS function. Here is a data step that finds all the prime numbers less than 100,000 and writes them to the data set. You'll notice that the work library contains a data set called FUNX, which is our function library, as well as the table of prime numbers, which we have just created. And there they are. Our second example builds on the first. We now create a function called nth prime, which calculates the nth prime number. To do this, it uses the function is prime that we defined just now. The only new proc FCMP syntax here is the inlib option. Because the definition of nth prime uses the function is prime, proc FCMP has to be told what function library to look in for is prime. The cmplib system option will be no help here. Notice that inlib is specified as a two-level name, whereas outlib is specified as a three-level name that includes the package. The rest of the code in the definition of the nth prime function is unremarkable. When this proc fcmp step is run, we have two functions defined in the primes package within work.funx. Here is a test program to put the new function nth prime through its basis. It simply prints out second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth prime numbers. The output looks like this. Remember that we can also call our functions from the macro language, for example, as we have done here. Now an example of a character function. This function, called inter, takes as input two character strings, s and t, and builds a new string by taking characters alternately from the two input strings. Here again, most of the function definition is ordinary base SAS code, but let's look closely at the function statement itself. Inter's two parameters, s and t, each have a dollar sign after them indicating that they are character strings. The final dollar sign indicates that the function itself returns a character value. Notice also that we are using a length statement for the result string. Without this, the statement result equals space would implicitly set the length to one character and the function would not work properly. This function is being stored in a package called text. Here's a test program which uses this function to splice together the strings sud and trier and discovers that it makes them sturdier. Recall now that because the parameters are character strings, we probably shouldn't really be defining a function at all. A subroutine would be more efficient. However, there may sometimes be other reasons why a function is preferable to a subroutine. For example, ease of use from within proc SQL. Let's convert that function to a subroutine, keeping the name inter. The function statement changes to a subroutine statement and we add to it a third parameter called result. And yes, that's a subroutine now. And we add an altargs statement, which is also unique to PROC FCMP. This says which of the parameters are output arguments, that is, which of them contain values to be returned to the calling program. So we no longer need our return statement, and we no longer need the length statement either. All the parameter strings, including the result string, are going to be declared in the calling program and passed to the subroutine by reference. 
the subroutine doesn't need to decide how long they're going to be. It just uses the string that it is given. We could store this subroutine definition in work.funks where it would overwrite the existing definition of a function with the same name, but instead we'll store it in a permanent function library in sense user called myFunks. The test program needs a few minor changes to match, but it will produce the same result. As you see, you may have spotted a couple of warning messages here, but there's nothing to worry about. One is telling us that we already had a function called inter defined. The other, that we didn't initialize the variable spliced. The function library work.funx should contain two functions in a package called primes and one in a package called text. Let's open that function library, which is after all just the data set, and have a look. It's basically okay, but not very illuminating. We can try instead looking at a dictionary table. SAS 9.2 has several new ones, including one called dictionary.functions. The call we need is func name. Let's see if we can find out is prime function there. So we'll look for all functions whose names begin with is. On the program, look at the results and it isn't there. We can look instead in the equivalent sasl view which is called refunk and we wouldn't find it there either neither dictionary dot functions nor sasl dot refunk includes functions defined using proc fcmp but you can look at them using the fcmp function editor we invert this from the sas menu by choosing solutions analysis and oops, analysis and there it is at the bottom of the menu. Here's the function editor in action. It is using a separate instance of SAS, but it has automatically defined for itself the library called Old Work, which corresponds to the work library of the original SAS session. There we can see our Funks library with two packages called primes and text. Expanding these, we can see the functions that we've been working on, is prime, length prime, and inter. If we double click on any of these, a window opens up giving details, including the source code. Our latest inter definition, the subroutine, is there in the SAS user library. One of the useful things the function editor allows us to do is to copy functions and subroutines from one function library to another. Those two prime number functions are currently in a temporary function library. We could save them into our own personal permanent function library in the SAS user. To do this, use the duplicate function. Alter the names of the SAS library. And the data set, that is to say the function library, we can leave the package the same. Click on OK. And there it is. Further presentations on PROC FCMP are planned, but that concludes this one. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus software podcast. We hope you found it useful. Please make sure to check out the rest of this podcast series via our website. We also welcome any comments or suggestions you may have for future tips. Please feel free to contact us via email, telephone, or by visiting our website at www.amadeus.co.uk.